Hi folks, welcome back to the Infinite Bliss YouTube channel. My name is Alana, if you're new here. I seem to have been jinxed with filming recently because I have filmed about three videos that have not been able to go up on YouTube, all thanks to technological issues. I'm not going to get into that right now. What I am going to get into right now is the eclipse season that we are currently in. Before we get started with this video, I'd love for you to comment down below what your sun sign is and if you have any aspects in your natal chart that might be affected by this current full moon eclipse that's coming up. It's going to be a full lunar eclipse on the 27th of July in Aquarius. If you have any aspects of your chart that are going to be affected, comment below and let me know because it's going to hit me really hard and it might be the same for some of you. So today we're going to be talking about what's going to be coming up with the full moon, what you can expect, and ways that you can move through it a little bit more smoothly than if you had never watched this video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram as well because I will probably be sharing my full moon eclipse routine and all the things that I'm going to be doing to keep myself calm and zen and centered during that crazy time because believe me, it's going to be a crazy time. So let's just dive in. Like I mentioned, the full moon is going to be in Aquarius, which means that the Aquarius Leo um, index, what's the word that I'm looking for? Leo and the Aquarius axis is going to be highlighted, which is basically opposition between self and universal or self and other. Full moons are all about relationships, so that basically means that your relationship with yourself and your relationship with the world around you with your family, your friends, your partner, and with society in general, wherever you are in the world, is going to be highlighted. You may be thrown into a stark contrast or a balance between what you need versus what everybody else needs from you. They might not align, which is generally what happens with a full moon. It causes you to look at things that are in opposition to each other and to really figure out where you stand in between both sides of the spectrum. So full moons are pretty intense as it is and then whenever it comes to being an eclipse on a full moon it's just an added element of intensity so basically the moon or the earth is going to be between the moon and the sun so that means that the light from the sun is going to be blocked by the earth and the moon is going to appear dark or red you can probably guess from a symbolic level that this means that we're going to be playing with the light side and the dark side of ourselves and that things are going to be hidden and things are going to be revealed. So full moon is usually a time of heightened intuition. However, with the eclipse, generally that means that a lot of that intuition is cut off and that maybe there's going to be some underhanded dealings going on or you should really kind of look out for whatever your dark side is because it could be showing up and surfacing at that time. Again, that's July 27th, if I didn't mention already. Something else that's going to be thrown into the mix is the fact that Mars is incredibly close to the Earth at the moment. We all know that planets whiz around the Sun. We all have a different orbit because we're different distances from the Sun. Earth and all the planets around it, we kind of get further away and closer together. And when those planets get closer to the Earth, they have more of an influence on us as humans from an astrological point of view, from a symbolic and a mythic kind of point of view as well. So Mars is going to be the closest to Earth that it's been for a few years. I think maybe 2003? Um, not too sure, but you can check that out. Mars is close to Earth. What does this mean? Other than the fact that a planet is close by and it's really cool to look up and be able to see it in the sky. Also, this means that all of the attributes of Mars are going to be slightly more pronounced. Obviously, Mars is known as the god of war. It's a fiery red planet moon is going to be red so we have this fire element of heat which can mean on the upside the power of transformation and action and liveliness and kind of getting new projects started things like that and then on the darker side of that spectrum you have arguments war frustration anger testosterone being thrown around those kind of aspects as well the reason why i mentioned your birth chart earlier on in the video and the reason why I'm interested in what people's sun sign is especially and your rising sign if you know it. Um, the places that the planets were at the time that you were born are basically those are the elements of your personality that get kind of triggered or highlighted when those same planets come into different aspects 
um, throughout your lifetime. So for example, I was born on a full moon, which means that full moons will have more of an impact on me throughout my lifetime than maybe somebody else who was born on a new moon or a quarter moon. Also, my sun sign is Scorpio and my rising sign is Aries. Both of those signs are ruled by Mars, which means that Mars being closer to Earth is going to highlight those aspects of myself. So in my chart I have four planets in Scorpio and I have my rising sign in Aries which means that with the Mars influence and the full moon and everything else, the eclipse, all of those things that are going on, this is going to be a pretty strong time for me that I can either use for transformation or maybe if I wasn't so aware of what was going on I would be fighting and I would be angry and I would be having a lot of upheaval. If you don't know what your birth chart is or where all the planets are in your chart I will leave a link down below to cafeastrology.com which is where I do mine. The only thing that you need to know is your place of birth and your exact time of birth. Where you were born in the world so longitude and latitude is important and the time that you were born is important because it shows from that perspective where you were born um, what was going on around you in the universe at that time. In the solar system really not necessarily the whole universe. And then from an astrological point of view that has a huge bearing on you as a person and how things affect you as your life goes on. So now that we know that it's going to be intense, it's going to be affecting you more or less depending on which planets that you have in your chart. And we have the effect also of Mars. What can we do about it? So I always counsel the full moon as a time of inner reflection more so than outer action. The full moon is generally a time when you sit down with yourself and realize all of the events that have brought you to this point and think what are you going to do with them to bring you forward to the place that you want to go. Of course because we have this heat and this power of transformation you can use this to really um, write out all your goals or your projects or start into motion like a mid-year reset if that's something that you're into. Whether you're thinking about them or not they are going to be coming up and you're going to be probably thinking about something that's needing to change in your life whether you like it or not. So journaling is just a great way to be aware in the first place of all of the kind of hidden parts of your personality or of your feelings and your thoughts that you might not be consciously addressing. Another thing to pay attention to is your dreams because obviously the moon highlights intuition and highlights dreams because it comes out during the night time and you know it's represented by water and the, those kind of things. Keeping a dream diary can be a huge, huge source of insight for you and can give you huge clues as to where you need to go in your life or things that maybe aren't sitting right with you right now. I would say get yourself into water. I love to have a bath on the full moon and I love to do things that make me feel really centered and grounded. So I will be focusing on my yoga and my meditation. I will try not to interact with as many people as possible because I know that there's going to be a lot of potential for people being other people being frustrated or other people looking for a fight or you know other people just kind of going through these same struggles in maybe a less conscious way than what I'm doing. <laughs> so I like to kind of limit and like do damage control, not talk to as many people as I kind of maybe normally would and focus on me. I take it as me time. Ooh, the light. Oh my god, look at this. It's like dark night of the soul over here because a cloud just went over the sun. Bear with me and my lighting. I'm still figuring things out as I go along here and the sun is not always cooperating. Oh, there we go again. Oh. The more conscious you are, the more aware you are and the more that you're able to notice um, how you're reacting to things and how other people around you are reacting to situations and comments and things like that, um, the more prepared you will be for times of turbulence like full moons and like eclipses. Eclipse season only comes around twice a year so this is kind of a turbulent time. Another thing to keep in mind is that Mercury is also retrograde which a lot of people in the astrological community are like no it's retrograde. Like it doesn't have to be disastrous if you don't want to make it into that. Um, it just means that technology might not be behaving the way that it needs to and um, communication m might take a little bit of a standstill so again with the Mars and the fighting and the communication breakdowns it's a, probably a good idea to just distance yourself from people a little bit and get that perspective of looking inward and seeing what you need as opposed to 
trying to interact with people which could potentially end in disaster. If you're interested in me filming more videos about astrology and about um, kind of significant events as they come up, then do leave me a comment down below or just give the video a thumbs up at least and then I'll know that you like it and that you want to watch some more. I want to please the people, don't I? <laughs> Leo versus Aquarius. Oh yeah. Um, that is all from me, folks. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you very shortly in my next one. Bye. Hi folks, welcome back to the Infinite Bliss YouTube channel. My name is Alana if you're new here. I seem to have been jinxed with filming recently because I have filmed about three videos that have not been able to go up on YouTube, all thanks to technological issues. I'm not going to get into that right now. What I am going to get into right now is the eclipse season that we are currently in. Before we get started with this video, I'd love for you to comment down below what your sun sign is and if you have any aspects in your natal chart that might be affected by this current full moon eclipse that's coming up. It's going to be a full lunar eclipse on the 27th of July in Aquarius. If you have any aspects of your chart that are going to be affected, comment below and let me know because it's going to hit me really hard and it might be the same for some of you. So today we're going to be talking about what's going to be coming up with the full moon, what you can expect, and ways that you can move through it a little bit more smoothly than 